Okay, so um, I got a mad glare from my hand there. That's all right, we'll get it going. Okay, so this is uh, me basically imagining myself standing at the intersection of conceptual art and teaching, and this is how it begins. You arrive at the intersection just in time to witness the collision between two high velocity bodies of knowledge hurtling into the future at speeds too extreme for the data to contain. When the vehicles collapse into one another, more than sparks and shrapnel fly. This metaphorical and conceptual impact exists beyond three dimensions. It ripples out into the world with the energy to transform and reimagine individual and collective futures born in a symphony of collaboration. This is no accident or random act of chance. There is a rich history of intention beneath this interplay of forces. Something is always happening at this intersection, and yet, so much is yet to be discovered. Conceptual art and teaching have always been about much more than the classroom. These ideas are embodied within the very structure of our socially interdependent world. Whether you choose to realize it or not, there is art in the way you live your life. Your expression of the art that is you educates and informs the network of relationships we all operate within. We are all quite literally walking artworks, teaching one another how we wish for the world to be as we work toward creating the very fabric of our social world. Seeing as how relationships are central to the question of conceptual art and teaching, we would be well advised to explore how influences operate within this process of social construction and identity formation. In my lifetime endeavor to find my authentic creative voice, I've encountered the work of many poets, authors, artists, and educators who have left their influential marks upon me. This is all well and good, but I don't aspire to be an entity simply derived from my influences. I wish to realize something of my own voice in the artwork that is my life. The following poems speak to a state of anxiety we all encounter when we attempt to step out of the shadows of our influences and become a creation of our own making. And here we switch over to a couple poems from a book of poems I'm in the process of hopefully publishing. So this one here is entitled Thoughts in Quotation. I'm excited to tell you about this new way of thinking, entirely borrowed from life. Each line, each phrase is a unit of time, a measure of thought, a solid and complete thing. Most people are other people. Their thoughts are someone else's opinions, their lives a mimicry, their passion a quotation. Oscar Wilde, true to life observed with that particularly cutting English wit. Anais Nin, touched by the deepest desire spoken, contemplates the wisdom of Proust. If what Proust says is true, that happiness is the absence of fever, then I will never know happiness, for I am possessed by a fever for knowledge, experience, and creation. Quotation, citation, reference, selection, passage, allusion, extraction of essence. How terrible it is that we have so many more desires than opportunities. Christopher Hitchens, never one for sentimentality, nostalgic for life and the tragedy of passing. It's okay to give yourself a minute. The weight of thought is heavy with quotation. I seem to have run in a great circle and met myself again at the starting line. The pursuit isn't all or nothing. It's all and nothing. Jeanette Winterson knows the depth to which I feel. Seldom has my mind found another mind more to love. I will leave it to you, Samuel Beckett, to have the final word on this matter. All of old, nothing else ever, ever tried, ever failed. No matter, try again, fail again, fail better. Shifting speed to In the Words of William Carlos Williams, another great influence of mine. Oh, humble doctor, poet of speech, pediatrician, technician, master of the heart's craft. 
What a feast of wisdom you have earned over a lifetime listening, passed on to share through recording. The pattern of spoken words professed in the everyday flow of living. If I may be so bold, let me capture a few remarks you once made that have never ceased to haunt my thinking. Would it disturb you if I said, you have no other speech than poetry, the undiscovered language of yourself? How is it that those humble words are not profound enough to transform our lives into living words? I'm saddened by our lack of action, but you inspire me still. So again, I will boldly borrow from phrases spoken from your lips. We were speaking straight ahead about what concerned us, and if I could have overheard what I was saying then, that would have given me a hint of how to phrase myself, to say what I had to say. Not after the establishment, but speaking straight ahead. I would have gladly traded what I have tried to say for what came off my tongue naturally. And there it is, the answer. It is found in honest conversation, speaking straight ahead, with the words falling off our tongues naturally. And this is at that point where you try to overcome uh, the influences in your life and you find inspiration. There is a vast body of work and you are a part of it. No need to worship anyone or anything. Study what you will and then take it out into the world. This is the way business is conducted. Take your seat at the table. Bring your own if not invited. You belong as much as anyone. Here, before you or after you. You know more than or less than the sum of what you have been taught. This moment is yours. You are the meaning maker. The question of influence is particularly important to me because I realize how the influence of countless mentors has acted upon me and how as an educator I am sharing in this vast well of influence that is the work of education itself. A crucial thing for me, however, is wanting to see my students become realized in the fullness of who they are as much as I desire this for myself. Over the years, I've created several text-based artworks which I have displayed throughout my classroom in order to speak to the concerns of finding your identity and becoming who you seek to be. A few of the phrases painted across the surfaces of old abstract paintings call out with an urgency to my students. I'll just share a couple of these at the moment. So this one here, if we can see that, oh, yeah, it's upside down. Well, no, it's not. Actually, is this breeding backwards? Dream your own. No, it's, we're seeing it correctly. <laughs> okay. It's, to me, it's backwards, so that's mystifying. Okay, dream your own dreams there. And then, yes, you are ready. And then this here is the meaning maker. So you are the meaning maker. And I'm here with the conclusion now, heading into the home stretch. Taking a step back from my own creative pursuits as an artist and educator, I focus upon the world of influence within the lives of my own children and how they are creating themselves each and every day amidst the culture that they consume. Whether it's my five-year-old daughter, Isla, role-playing with her Disney princesses, or my 10-year-old son, Ian, engaging in Fortnite battles and exploits, they are both creating a lens by which they will engage the world of their future selves. Recently, my son has expressed an interest in possibly becoming a game designer. One of the seeds of thought that I've planted within his mind is the idea that he needs to build his own cultural sandbox to play in. Rather than always being at the mercy of the things he consumes, I wish to see him take the initiative to produce something of his own, which he builds alongside the things which influence him. So much of what we consume is no more than a distraction, a distraction from us realizing what, what we ourselves could create and contribute to the world around us. Far more than entertainment, we hunger for meaningful education, which will allow us to create something profound and lasting within ourselves and the communities we activate our lives within. With that, I will close with a poem, imagining the mind of a guru, the ultimate archetype of the educator and all their questionable claims to authority. All right, close your eyes, take three deep breaths, situate your awareness, confront yourself within the open fields of your consciousness. Why have you come here? What are you seeking? Be still with your inner turmoil rising up around you. Be still through the random winds of change. Be still amidst the fires of ambition and desire. Open your eyes. I have no answers to give you. Thank you.
Appreciate it all.